Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab, and today I'm at All Energy with James Sturge from Solar Edge. And James, you're going to blow my mind, aren't you? I hope so. <laughs> well, let's, let's get into it. Absolutely. So, James, Solar Edge is kind of like DC is its superpower, right? Absolutely, yeah. And you've taken DC from solar panels and done magical things with optimizers. What does an optimizer do? So, an optimizer, the easiest way to understand it is it's a maximum power point tracker. So, instead of having a, a single maximum power point tracker in your inverter, we have a maximum power point tracker under every single panel. The way they actually work is that they output the variable DC that comes from the panel into a static level DC. So for a residential inverter, it's 400 volts fixed. What the inverter does is basically just modulates the current. So we've got this fixed DC bus. There's a load of other benefits as well because we've got MLPE, we've got the ability to be able to look at exactly the output of a single module. We've got a whole load of additional safety benefits. One of the things we've released is our new S-series optimizers, which in those little short stubby connections here, they've actually got temperature sensors in them. So if the temperature goes above 85 degrees, it shuts the system, shuts the panel down and sends an alert. That's the precursor for an arc. So we don't do arc, we do arc detection, arc prevention, but we actually look for the situation that may cause an arc. Because as you know, most of the arcs are originated MC connectors. Right, so that's the optimizer. And then you've got a battery. Yes. I mean, lots of people have batteries, but what's different about this one? What's different about this one is it's super efficient. Because it sits on the DC side of the inverter, we've only got a single conversion. So unlike an AC couple battery that you've got to go you know, DC to AC and AC to DC, we don't suffer the three conversion losses. So it's only going DC to AC one. But that means it's the most efficient battery on the market. So your battery actually sits on the DC line from the panels. Correct. Right. So this is a DC, this is a battery that we produce ourselves. We design it around that fixed voltage. So it sits at 400 volts fixed. Which is because you're using optimizers, you can control the, the voltage with the uh, power conversion of the inverter. The inverter communicates with them. So the, it's actually the inverter that's driving the system. And what that then means is that we've got complete control. But if you ever get the situation where the inverter falls over or it's turned off, the optimizers will then ramp down that voltage so you get a single volt out of it. So what that means is for the installation perspective, installers are never playing about with 600 volts potentially in the roof. The maximum you get is 26, because you can't have more than 26 optimizers in a string. And then you can also, if you want to do maintenance on a roof, you can flick the red toggle switch on the inverter and shut the DC down. So, so super, super safe. Super safe. So it's got safe DC. Safe DC is in there as well, which is like this automatic mechanism, which comes from America. Yeah. So yeah. it's effectively fail safe. Correct. Yeah, fail safe. Yeah. That's super safe for installers. What's the black box next to you? This black box is our absolute game changer. <laughs> so this is our new 24 kilowatt bi-directional DC EV charger. It's not available just yet. We'll probably hopefully be able to start testing them towards the end of next year. We're going to be launching it in Europe first. But what it does, just like the battery, it sits on the DC side. So we're just going to DC to DC in the car. And then the car, like I say, bi-directional, DC back through the inverter onto the AC side for vehicle to home or vehicle to grid. You mean the 54 kilowatt hour battery in my car can be part of my home energy system? Absolutely. So what we commonly hear from installers, they love the idea of this or, you know, people that work in businesses, they can go to work charge up for free at work because they've got a massive great big system on their, on their business, come home, plug in, and they need hardly any battery capacity because they can now run their home through their car. Ideally, they'd have a battery as well because if the grid goes down, then they've got backup on all those functions as well. Now, given that that's a big charger, let's say I only have 15 kilowatts of panels, how am I going to get 25 kilowatts out of that charger? Well, it doesn't have to run at that rate. It, it will run, it, it ramps depending on what energy is available. But in theory, you could have top up from the AC side as well. So let's say you've got your battery is full, so nothing's really happening there. You've got only 15 kilowatts coming on the roof and you don't want to touch your battery capacity because you isolate that. Well, you can top up through the inverter. You can have a 10 kilowatt single phase inverter. So you've got a bit from the AC side, but the majority coming from the DC side. Or if you wanted, you could use your batteries as well to output. So you could only use five kilowatt from the AC side and 20 kilowatt from your DC side. So the inverters are bi-directional on the DC port. It's a multiple mode inverter. Right. Yes, that's why I don't have to because uh, it's got to be able to deal with the battery. Energy and store, sink energy into the battery. Exactly, yeah. Wow, that is a game changer because many customers on a single phase installation would never have the capacity for 25 kilowatts. Yeah. The other thing that then makes it really cool is that we are, to a certain extent, out of bounds for, for networks and a lot of that 
regulation. You don't need to worry about things like OCPP. You don't need in, in some jurisdictions where they want to control charge rates, be limited to 20 amps and all this kind of stuff, because it's on the DC side. Right. So the DC side's like going off grid almost. Pretty much, yeah. Independent. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that is unique to Solar Edge because of the way we control and manage the DC bus. We can play about in this side, which is so much more efficient. Now, what happens if the grid fails? What if the grid fails? Well, we can, um, installers can put on the backup interface for the customer, which then means that the inverter will just go into grid forming mode, then everything will carry on staying online. So you can still have a charger with the yeah, grid fails? With a no, based on, control. again, based on the DC energy, which is available. So yeah. You can use whatever's available at the fastest rate possible with your DC Correct. charger. Absolutely. Correct. It is a game changer. Instant game changer. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very much, James. No I really feel it's my time. I think it's my year. Yeah. Yeah. I really feel it's my time. I think it's my year. Yeah. Yeah. I really feel it's my time. I think it's my pen ready. Used to hold myself back. Myself a sting game paddy. Gotta keep on chugging. Ran through everything in front of me. Might smoke been heavy. Gotta hold a gym.